Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name's Emma Fave, and today I'm gonna be painting two kind of wintry landscapes, but you guys are gonna get a little insight into seeing how I play around, learn new things, try out new things. This isn't necessarily a tutorial, kinda is, but you really get to see me play and discover things, and I will say, not have things not go as planned and me not enjoy my work and then see how I can fix it and <laughs> just kind of the whole process that artists go through usually not in front of a camera but I decided to do it in front of a camera and then keep it in and show you guys my whole process of when things don't work out and how I try and fix them and see if I like them in the end or not that's this is long but anyway I hope you enjoy it and I hope it's valuable. So let's just, let's just jump into the video and get started. <clears throat> okay friends, so it is still pretty gross and cold here where I live and it's been such a bummer for the past month and a bit. We did get um, a fortunate few days of sunshine, which was lovely, but now we're back to the grayness outside and it absolutely sucks. But my goal has been lately to try and find the beauty in, you know, the that awkward, not awkward stage, but that weird stage of winter where it's not necessar necessarily picturesque, where the snow has fallen so beautifully. Um, I've been looking around recently and I see, you know, all the trees that are very, very bare without snow on them. And you just see this kind of like brown, um, like almost like a burnt sienna kind of background against the blue sky. And there is some beauty to it. So I kind of wanted to try and capture that today, but it's not necessarily... Um, me showing you a painting that I've been working on. It's me kind of showing you how I want to play around with what I'm seeing outside. So I'm going to try some things. Hopefully they work and you can just paint along with me. Um, but I'm trying to capture some sort of beauty that I'm seeing in this <laughs> unfortunate season here in Canada, um, which is those blah winter months. So I am painting in my on my Academy watercolor pad. Uh, I just taped halfway because I wanna do two. I wanna play around with two kind of landscapes. I wanna do one with more of like a clear sky and one more with the clouds, but same kind of thing. Um, I'm just kind of testing out what I've been seeing around. I have my Paul Rubens watercolors here and I have this flat wash brush, which I'm gonna be using for the background sky. I have my size six and my size two and maybe even a liner brush for some details on the trees, but we'll see how far that gets us. And maybe if I feel like it, I might add some bleed proof white, not really sure. Um, but I'm just gonna kind of wing it today and talk to you about my process of just playing around with what I see outside. Okay, so for my first landscape, I wanna wet from the horizon line up. So, I'm just going to pick just slightly below midway and I'm just going to wet the background. Um, I just find it's a lot easier to add the color down when it's already wet because what I want to do, oh, there was some pink in here. <laughs> what I want to do is I want to have a blue sky. This is going to be one of the more blue kind of days. Um, but then I want to use the wet on wet effect for the trees, the brown trees kind of bleeding into the sky. So I'll kind of show you what I mean. The pink is coming from this side here. I see now, it's fine. We're gonna make it work. Okay, and for the blue, I'm gonna use this, I think it's like cobalt turquoise light almost. It's a really bright blue. I want it to be a bit brighter um, because we are gonna be using a lot of brown. So I want the blue to be nice and bright. So I'm just gonna start by adding it, like a decent amount of it to the top here. And then it's gonna slowly fade to a lighter value down to that horizon line. Because I don't necessarily want the blue and the brown to mix. I do want a bit of that um, blue or the brown to bleed into the blue. But they're 
to be some separation. So I'm just going to make it nice and bright at the top. And then I'm just slowly moving it down so there's less pigment on my brush as I'm moving it down. Okay, I don't know if you can hear that in the background. I think my son found one of those doorstop things and he's just flinging it. <laughs> so that's what that sound is. Okay, and then as I'm bringing it down, I'm gonna wash off my brush gently, dry it a bit, and just bring it down because I want it to be really, really light here where I'm gonna be placing the brown. Okay, so it fades into a lighter blue, a nice gradient. Um, if you want to make the blue up there a little bit darker, I can't remember which blue is which, you can always make it a little bit more intense with a slightly darker color at the top just so there's a bit more of a gradient from dark to light, but it's totally up to you. And now while it's still wet, I'm going to grab my size 6 brush and I'm going to grab some brown. Forget which brown this is. I don't think it's burnt umber. It looks a little bit more like a burnt sienna. And I'm just going to go along the horizon line like this so I can see where I'm putting it and then I'm going to mix it a little bit with a darker brown if you have a black that works too and I'm going to start tapping it to hopefully get these bleeds I'm going to have some that are higher and some that are lower okay And these are not obviously evergreen trees like um, like Christmas trees. Why can't I think of words today? <laughs> They're the ones with like all the branches and all the leaves that have fallen. An evergreen tree. Why I cannot think of the word? A pine tree or you know what I mean. Okay, so it's more on the brighter side of brown. It's kind of more of like a burnt sienna. So I'm just going to add a little bit more darker brown in there. And also just kind of tap that in there. Maybe even do some lines. So it's a little bit darker towards the base. I want it a little bit lighter up there and then a little bit darker towards the base. So I'm just going to, while it's still wet, I'm going to kind of add these lines. And you can even go across the horizon line with this darker brown. And because it's wet on wet, it should still kind of be blurry and fuzzy, those lines. Okay, you should still be able to see lines. And if, if it's bleeding too much, you might have too much water or paint on your brush. So just my rule of thumb, always when you're doing wet on wet, and you really want to control that water, tap your brush on your paper towel to take off some of that excess water. And then you have a bit more control. And I'm just adding these small little lines of like tiny branches. Again, I could just keep adding more paint and not necessarily water. And that helps with the control. I like it. I like it. I like it. Okay. I've been eyeing this color out in nature recently. I feel like it's such a beautiful brown. I'm just going to blend this a bit more. Feel like it's a little harsh okay and we are going to do some more detailed branches this is just like the kind of background blurred out version I'm just going to add a little bit more darkness to some parts just so it's not so like just vertical lines I want some kind of horizontal lines and I feel like I need a little bit more darkness at the bottom here Again, not a lot of water. You don't want it to bleed out everywhere, okay? Okay, then I wanna do the snow. And the snow is white, but I don't want it to just be white. So I'm gonna use a blue to get that shadow, but I wanna use a different blue than the sky. I wanna use a warmer blue, I think. So I'm gonna grab some ultramarine, if I can remember. I think it's this one. Just a little bit. I'm gonna go over here a lot oops and I'm just gonna make it really light and even use some of that kind of dry brush just so it doesn't hit every part of the paper just for a little bit of texture 
I actually kind of want it to be darker on the sides than in the middle. Maybe we can make this kind of like a lake. So I'm just bringing it to the middle. So see how it even still looks like white snow, even though we just painted it blue. It's interesting, right? And if you feel like it's too blue, you can always wash off your brush, dry it, and then like lift up some of that color. If it's just too blue. I wonder if I should have a little bit of a bleed from the brown to the I'm just touching the brown a little bit with the blue, the horizon line, just to have a, a little bit of a bleed into it. I don't want it to be too, I don't know. <laughs> really good with words today, guys. I'm so sorry. I'm just going to add a little bit more brown. I'm going to have some brown kind of coming to the sides. Maybe it's not like fresh snow covered because, you know, if it was freshly snow covered in the trees, you would see a lot of that white in the snow still. Maybe there's still snow on the ground, but it's, you know, starting to melt in some places. So you're getting some of that brown ground. Yeah. I kind of like that. A little bit darker. Might even add some like little twigs or something. I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry and then we'll come back and do a little bit more detail. But while it's drying, I'm going to work on this one. This one I want to add clouds. So I want to have a bit of a different color for the sky. It's not going to be a bright sunny blue sky. So let me just test out my blues because I can't remember which blue is which. This is more of like a purpley blue, this one. I think I'm going to do that. So Again, I'm going to wet up my horizon line <clears throat> just so it's easier to apply the paint. At least I find it is. Okay, so I wet it up about halfway. I'm going to grab like a purpley blue. You can always mix kind of like an ultramarine with... Um, some purple. That might be a bit too purpley. I don't know. And then I'm going to have my paper towel handy because I'm going to do some blotting to lift up some clouds. Might even get some gray in there. So starting a little bit of the brighter blue too towards the bottom. So starting with a darker value at the top and then just fading it lighter towards the horizon. Just adding more of that bright blue. Okay. And then I'm going to grab my paper towel. I'm going to Kind of create like a ball just sticking my finger in there create a little bit of a ball and I'm just gonna dab some clouds then I'm going to make kind of like a flat edge because I want some flatter clouds down here like that. Okay. Then I'm just going to take some of my darker blue. I kind of want a, like a gray, maybe a little bit of a black with the blue. And I'm just going to kind of start placing it around some of those white areas and underneath them. Just a little bit. So I'm placing it mostly on the purpley sky that's still pretty wet. 
And I'm just going to try and blend it into these blotted areas. Maybe a little bit more blue in there. Yeah, I saw these incredible clouds the other day. And I kind of wanted to try and replicate replicate them, but I did not take a picture. So now I'm going to wash off my bri my bri oh my gosh my brush and dry it, and then I'm going to just kind of blend some of these edges out. I don't want them too too harsh. Try and add a bit more blue in there. Kind of hope for the best. <laughs> and it's starting to dry at the top. And it, I want it more of a textured sky anyway, so I'm not too worried. Just really, when you're working like this, try not to have a lot of water on your brush. Just keep tapping it on your paper towel just to make sure, because it's easier to blend, and then you don't get those crazy blooms when you go back to add more color. I'm gonna get a bit more of that purpley color just because I need to wet it up a bit more again. Just a little bit. And I don't really know if this is working or not. <laughs> That's okay. We are figuring it out, right? That's the point. I might have to dab again. I want it to be more of like a chaotic kind of sky of clouds. You know, a little bit of dry brush, maybe a little bit of that lighter blue. And I wanted to do the same kind of trees. I feel like this is too purple. What if we add more blue up here? Is that too dark? Or what if we add the lighter blue on top to brighten it? I don't know. I don't know if that's working or not. I don't think it is, but that's okay. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry and then I think I might wet it all again or should I I don't know I don't like it I don't like it at all this is the beauty of getting to watch me play around this is what we're gonna do you don't like something you try again <laughs> okay you try again I'm not even gonna cut that out we're gonna leave that in you're gonna leave it in don't love it let me use this bright blue feel like it needs to be a bit more blue. It looked too much like a darker sky, I think. Like, I wonder if I did too much. Um, while it was drying, you know? But we can use this. We can do something with this. So, try and make that lighter. Okay, let's try this again. I want to add some clouds. Clouds are some of the most difficult, I find, things to paint. And there's only so much you can do to lift paint. <laughs> so, I mean, only so many times you can before you kind of just start losing the integrity of your paper. So maybe we just have a very textured sky. Maybe I'll just leave it like this. I don't like it like this, though. I wanted some shadows, so I think I need to work a little faster with some of the shadows. So I'm just placing some darkness around those blotted areas, I think. But I don't want to do too much. Because I feel like that's where I went wrong last time. So this is indigo that I'm using now. Just trying to get some of those darker, moodier bits. I don't like this either. That doesn't look good either. Okay. 
hmm, what do we do now? And we accept that this may not be something that we like. <laughs> I don't like it at all. This is going to be very hard for me to post. But I think I'm going to do it to show you. Okay, I want those trees. So you know what? I'm going to leave this guy. I'm going to try and put these trees same kind of way we did with the other one. They're not going to be as big. It's going to be a little bit further away in the distance. So they're going to be smaller because I wanted <laughs> I wanted the sky to be the thing that we look at in this one, but See, landscapes are not necessarily my thing. Especially clouds. Clouds I've always found so difficult and I usually get really frustrated with them. There's sometimes where they just turn out and there's sometimes where they just do not like now. <laughs> so, but we're going to go with it. We're going to go with it and see what happens, right? That's what we do. I'm going to get some darker brown. Wonder if I should put some green. Hmm. I think also the purple was the wrong choice for this. I don't know. What if I get some green for some of the evergreen trees in the background? Just little bits of green, just to change it up a bit. Maybe, maybe not. It needs to be a bit darker. And I'm just doing these like vertical lines and then kind of tapping on either side. It's not bad. It's just, I don't know what it is. Not what I was going for. Let's put it that way. All right, let's do the snow. Let's just do the snow. Same kind of thing, I think. <laughs> grab our kind of ultramarine not a lot though just kind of more to the sides I'm going to touch that horizon line for it to bleed in a bit I want a bit more texture in this one so I'm just going to use a bit more of a dry brush Like so. Okay, do not love the clouds at all. Maybe we can save them with some white paint. <laughs> I don't know, but what, whatever it is that we're gonna do to it, we're gonna let it dry. We are gonna let it dry. And then here, I didn't wanna do too much. I'm gonna grab my smaller brush and a darker brown. And I just wanted to do some more defined trees in the foreground. So it should be dry. And I'm just doing these kind of like vertical lines. And I'm not doing a lot of the, what's it called, the branches just yet, because I want them to be really thin and tiny. I feel like I should use a smaller brush for that. Just so some of those lines that we did while it was still wet are more the wet or the like out of focus ones and then these ones that are sharper are just more in focus to give it a little bit more depth hopefully.
Now I'm just going really, really lightly. Actually, I'm gonna grab my smaller brush, my liner brush. I'm gonna grab a little bit of the lighter brown, just so it's not so crazy. And I'm just gonna do these really tiny lines for the branches, kind of coming off of those tree trunks. And it doesn't need to be a lot of it. You don't need to draw every single one. I don't think. Just a little bit. See, I like the way this one looks. Okay, and then I would do just like a couple little, it's like almost like grass kind of coming out of it. And I'm going to wash my brush and then just kind of blend out the bottom. Some up front, maybe. Like that, and just kind of leave it. Nothing too crazy. And I like that one. And then we go back to this one, and I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, maybe if we define the trees here... Um, this is kind of dry. What if I add white? I feel like the sky is already a bust. So when a painting, when you get to a painting where you're just like, I don't like this, instead of stopping, just try, just try some new things. I'm going to add some white and just see if this kind of helps. Just fluff up the sky a bit. I don't know. I really don't know if it's going to do what I wanted it to do. Okay, but at this point, when you don't love something that you do, this is almost like instead of looking at it as like a, a setback, look at it as an opportunity to experiment with something, knowing that the outcome may work, may not work, but it doesn't really matter because if your plan was to kind of like just throw it out the window anyway, you might as well try new things and then you might surprise yourself and see what works and what doesn't. So that is my... <clears throat> little piece of advice when painting with watercolor and things don't work out the way you necessarily wanted it to. Okay, now I'm going to add some of that blue with my white. Let's see if I can get a more opaque shade. I don't know. Just adding a little bit of indigo. Kind of want a little bit more dry brush. Or maybe not. It's not bad. There's this part that's driving me kind of crazy. I'm just going to turn that into a darker cloud. Maybe the clouds get darker. At the bottom, it would have been helpful if I took a reference photo when I saw what I wanted to paint, which I didn't and I totally should have. Always take a reference photo. Why not, right? Especially if you're trying to paint something that you want to, that you saw. Definitely should have painted or got a reference photo of this. But I mean, I feel like it looks a little bit more... Um, textured now and I kind of like it so may have saved it with this I don't know you can let me know in the comments below what you think okay either way it's not the focus of the painting okay let's get on these trees a little bit because I do want to make those a bit more in focus so I'm going to grab my dark brown again and then for these trees, I'm just doing the same kind of thicker trunks, but more so lines, just vertical lines, just on the brown. OK, 
Okay. Nothing too crazy. that and then my liner brush so I can get those really tiny branches just really light pressure and then the evergreen trees again I'm going back to my like size 2 and grabbing some of my darker green Mixing it with a little bit of the brown just to make it a bit more muted. And I'm just going to go over top and just kind of make them a bit sharper. So I'm just doing like a vertical line down and then kind of tapping side to side. And it'll be more in focus because we're doing wet on dry. So, kind of, I don't know, I feel like this is something I'm going to need to practice a lot. <laughs> you know, am I completely satisfied with this? No, not really, but I'm learning as I go and I think it's fun to do it on camera or a punishment. I can't, I can't decide yet. <laughs> and take a little bit of my ultramarine. I'm going to do a bit more. Mm, no, we're not going to do any dry brush. I think I'm just going to leave that. I don't know, but I think sometimes you need to like step away, see what it looks like, come back with fresh eyes, look at it tomorrow, look at it later, look at it from afar, look at it upside down, hold it up <laughs> um, and see. But yeah, there are my two wintry landscapes. Um, where I'm kind of just playing around and trying to figure out new techniques for myself. So I hope this was an informative video that you guys actually learned something from my mistakes and the way my process is of how I learn to paint new things. And you guys can let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something and I will see you in our next tutorial. Have a great day guys. Bye.